Welcome back everyone to episode 16 of Let's Play Rule the Waves as Germany. I love this kind of image so I decided to keep recording this. This is the same battle. Um, this is the first hit. We did chase them quite a ways, you can see, out of port. Um, but I love this image. The water is dead calm. The weather is clear. You can imagine it's just getting to noon. People have already finished their breakfast and are hungry for a little bit of blood. We've kind of chased them off their original line. I finally got them to turn. I had to risk my destroyers a little bit to do so, but that's typically how things go. You know, no no risk, no reward. So now we've actually got them, and we're one knot faster than them. These guys are 24 knots, but they only have 4-inch weapons. So we need to basically stay away from getting hit by our... Um, their light cruisers can very easily sink our destroyers. I'm having my destroyers, of course, focus on their destroyer, which is their faster Asanagi class, 34 knots, very fast. But um, obviously, all our, four of our destroyers will easily take out one of their destroyers. The problem is, uh, of course, the light cruisers. So here we go. I think this will be a, a lot of fun. I'm just imagining the situation here. Dead calm, clear weather. We spot each other. The engagement begins. Things are going well for us. We have to make sure we avoid torpedoes. In fact, I'm going to encourage our own destroyers to launch torpedoes in a second. Because I think torpedoes might end up winning the day here. Their ships don't typically stay in a straight line for long enough that we would get too many hits out. But again, the weather's dead calm, so we're not going to worry about wind at all. We're just going to try to charge at them. <clears throat> we're getting a lot of hits too, so this could be a fine engagement for us as long as we don't get hit by a I think torpedo is the only thing that can cause us to lose this one. So I'm going to be very open about my own torpedo launching. Looks like this one might already be slowing down, which is going to cause them to kind of separate. I'll bring my torpedo, my destroyers up right alongside, and we'll just do a full barrage. Okay, let's separate them. I can see that this guy's trying to bend in to protect. And again, these guys are very deadly against my destroyers, so I have to make sure that the light cruisers are... Oh, now this is the one that's slowing up. Okay, what we're going to do here is have our destroyers, okay, they can't focus on uh, the other light cruiser, but we're going to send them this way. We're going to tuck our light cruisers in this way just so they don't get <laughs> affected by the torpedo barrages, which I hope are about to be launched by our destroyers. Now, uh, for surface mount, uh, for submerged, 25 knots is the maximum you can launch, but my destroyers have surface mounted. And these don't have a limit. So here we go. Now turn hard and launch torpedoes. If they don't launch torpedoes, there's nothing I can do, but um, we're trying to put them in a position where they can. Uh, what the hell is going on? We're still doing a lot of damage to that one. He's probably sinking, in fact. So now the G8's just getting himself out of position, unfortunately, because. I don't know, the rest of the crew just decided to do their own thing. And this is what's going to happen if you're not careful, G8. Okay, well, let's just run past the Chiyoda anyways. Our light cruisers are far enough away that they're dis they're, they're not engaging, essentially. In fact, I'm going to have them focus on the destroyer for, this, for a second. Good, we're actually hitting it. Because if that goes down, that limits their ability to do... Um, Torpedo damaged us, which is obviously one thing we have to be pretty careful about here. Two more six inch hits. That's probably going to end her day. No torpedo launches yet, so we'll bring the G8 back around. Now, this is very dangerous because this is exactly what I'm afraid of. Okay, it's this Chioda who's launching the weapons at our G8, though, which means that this probably is just more or less already destroyed. Oh, there she goes. She might have just lost power briefly. Good, they're two separate ones now. So obviously we're going to target this Chiyota class. We are targeting this destroyer, but I, I suppose they're not targeting it because they know it's already sinking. Weird, we have some kind of detached G8 is flooding. Are you really? Not really. 
But anyways, we're going to do the same thing. Continue to engage this Chiyota class. Let's have this G8 hold fire on torpedoes just because I'm nervous about possibly hitting our own ships. And we can slow down to 27, I think. This one's going 20 anyways. Yeah, doing a lot of damage to that Chiyota class. These guys are obviously a little reluctant to fire at this destroyer because they know it's sinking. We'll swing in just to avoid torpedoes. Uh, how do I want to do this? Pull away. We're waiting for torpedoes. There's a torpedo. Yeah, just split the difference here. I missed with that one though. Okay, but a lot of hits. So we can see that our four inch guns are probably penetrating their two inch armor at this close range. Yeah, you must, you have to be almost certain of that. We can see that the range to target here is, whoops, sorry, this one, 2000 yards. And our gun data is we penetrate three inches of armor at 5000. So we're definitely penetrating. So even our guns are doing significant damage at this point. So maybe we'll just work the G8 back around the other side, just so she kind of avoids torpedoes. And these guys are still just mauling the Asanagi. After that volley, it's really sufficient for us to start engaging the last light cruiser. But let's tow in a little bit again, just to keep our course corrections going, avoiding torpedoes, of course. Okay. You're not launching torpedoes, so it's okay if you make a run this way. And you guys will head on the inside. We'll come back. Even if the one get, oh gosh, that was bad. There's the launches that I was hoping for. Okay, let's have the G8 back around this way. One of those should hit, right? Fantastic, okay, you guys stop launching torpedoes now. Because you've, uh, the G8 will finish her off if you don't at this point, so let's just curl back in. Are we going to be fast enough to avoid those torpedoes? Yeah. Good god, they, <laughs> they all missed. Uh, okay, 28. I keep going. It looks like the G8 is tucking back into line. Okay, let's allow torpedo launches once more time. one more time. Have them continue. Yeah, they're obviously going to continue to engage that until they're out of range. All right, trying to watch too many things. It's all the destroyers that are hitting now, so they're just pummeling this Chiyota class. All right, let's go after the last one then. She's dead in the water, so I think we're okay. Let me make sure I keep course correcting here so we don't get torpedoes. Okay, that's another torpedo. We still have plenty of torpedoes left, so we'll wait. Uh, maybe launch one more. Okay, now I will stop torpedoes because we're certainly going to be in a situation where one of those should hit. And course correct again. There it is. And she's down. We'll send our ships back over there just so they can start rescuing survivors. Yeah, perfect. Exactly what I wanted. And make sure we're doing course corrections here. So that somebody is already... Okay, the rest of you guys continue. Another hit, another hit. I don't, it's interesting that these guys haven't launched torpedoes yet themselves. Okay. Obviously a victory. Okay, good. Well, I had a lot of fun with this one. Keep going. You guys launch torpedoes at will. Don't launch torpedoes now. Just to be safe, I'm gonna make sure they don't even overlap. Uh, I've had times before where they just launched torpedoes. I don't think I've ever had a friendly ship hit by my own torpedoes, but there's been times when it's been close, so we just want to avoid that. Get 
again. Let's try to avoid. Okay, yeah, see, there's the torpedoes. We are already dodging, though. It's good. But this is, oh, boy, coming to an end very quickly. Yeah, there it is. Okay, good. That should do it. Wow, you missed. Now, a good victory. I'm not even going to really pay too much attention. Another 1,000, you know? So we're starting to edge out. Whoops, I actually want to look at that, sorry. 150 blockade. Um, I'm just looking for Japan. They scrapped their Fuji. Okay, <laughs> that's one way of dealing with it. They are behind us in torpedo technology. Strange. Japan has a, an advantage in that. And we also have more ships in West Africa. Okay, why is that? Who's in West Africa? What? I, I, I'm... I'm I don't have words. I don't have words to try to explain what the idiocy of my fleet is. Um, I don't know why this person is active fleet and moving to the Mediterranean. I never did that. Let's just move into the Indi Indian Ocean. Yeah, we're taking a few hits, and I'm not really setting up my raiders the way I should. If I was really doing min max, which hey, that's what I kind of like to do. Why am I not doing that? But it's it's a moot point. That's why. Although I could save us a little unrest. Okay, we're positive in all the areas, so there's no problems with foreign tonnage. That's not causing unrest. So we really just need to go into northern or Northeast Asia with a big fleet and start raiding to quickly end this war. We only have one. Where? Oh, my heavy cruiser got... That's right. Picked up. So let's see where my fleet is now. We have three battleships in Southeast Asia. I'm gonna leave that. Hopefully we can actually take over one of their holdings there. But you can't force it, you just leave your battleships there and it to encourage an invasion. All right, these light cruisers, these are the important ones. We only have one in Northern Europe, so I guess, yeah. Now we have two in the Indian Ocean. Is that really necessary? Yeah, we're 8,000 over, so we don't need two in the Indian Ocean. So, that's probably because... No, I have no idea why that's happening. Let's move this one into... Southeast Asia. Let's go to Southeast Asia, actually. The ones in the Southeast Asia, they're both raiding. Oh, that's it. <laughs> We've lost a lot of Gephians in the Southeast Asia, I guess, from problems, various problems. Nope. Destroyers down here. That's fine. Okay, well, I'm going to trust everyone else is where they should be. Just push on. Superimpose turrets on heavy cruisers. We probably won't be building too many more heavy cruisers because now, at this point, battle cruisers satisfy both battleship and cruiser um, tonnage requirements for your nation. Sinking a whole bunch of Japanese submarines. That's good. Cruiser action. Just heavy cruisers. <laughs> Will decline. Convoy attack. You know what? I'm, I think this war has pretty much come to an end. If you don't mind, I'll just kindly skip some of these events. But only having this many raiders is a little discouraging. Okay, why are you having problems in the Indian Ocean? We have plenty of stuff in the Indian Ocean. Hmm. Oh well. So, the only place I'd like to be raiding a little bit more is in Northeast Asia. So, let's see. Let's get another one of these guys raiding. Okay, next turn. Oh, we'll strike a balance. Keep doing that. Improve triple turrets. Very nice. Um, that's perfect timing because I'm about to commission some of my battle cruisers, <laughs> which have triple turrets. <laughs> Alright, we're only at unrest level 2. I think we're okay. Right, so seeing that they have an estimated enemy force of just Battlecruiser, we know that they're going to decline. So we gain 160 victory points for free. Yeah, we will say the Navy can deal with it. I've had this, a lot of problems in my last Let's Play series when I was playing as the United States. I had a lot of problems. Maybe they just model the United States Army as very weak. <laughs> I don't know. Things didn't work out so well for us. 
Okay, let's see a coastal raid. I hate coastal raids, I'm just gonna decline that. So we still have, although our monthly balance is gonna drop as soon as the war ends as well, um, we do have a sizable amount of funds. Our four battle cruisers are already being built. Maybe we should start thinking about getting this Hamburg class light cruiser. We didn't actually start building it, but it is going to have the five six inch volleys. Um, I was really hoping to get quality one six inch guns because it, it's hard for me to just avoid using, in a min max sense, the quality one five inch guns, which are pr still pretty darn good, especially the way I use my cruisers. They're usually all the way in the fight or not at all, so they'd still be completely penetrating any, any other light cruisers with five inch guns. I mean, you don't do as much damage for penetration though, so there's something to be considering that a six inch shell just has more damage than a five inch shell. So penetration or not, if both are penetrating, the six inch one is gonna win. Hard, hard to think about that. Okay, submarines, totally useless, but thank you anyway, France. Medium range submarines is actually something I wouldn't mind building, especially because Sabo recommended I do so. Talked about Germany having some good submarines in this time, time period. Okay, cruiser action. We'll expect that they decline this, I mean, because they don't have any cruisers. Fantastic. That's probably modified by your intel effort, so if I went up to intel of medium, we might have a better idea of what's going on, but low intel has been sufficient for us, hasn't it? Okay, we should not let them off, I think. This is a prestige down. Let's say that uh, we should not let them off lightly, because although I am declining a bunch of their things, I would like to invade. Okay, cruiser action. They do have cruisers here, so we'll decline. Again, we are continuing to blockade them. Turn after turn, we're blockading them, which is obviously greatly increasing unrest in the Japanese population. So, Okay, they're still sinking too many of our ships. And in Northeast Asia, where I... Oh! Well, this is interesting. They are going to have better dreadnoughts than I do. But we'll do it anyway. This is a needless risk that I'm doing just because this is a Let's Play series on YouTube. <laughs> and if you disagree with that decision, uh, you, you, that's entirely your right. It's probably not a good decision. What we're going to do is probably just bugger off the moment we get any kind of advantage. Okay, but we got ourselves into this, so where's the nearest uh, port for us? Pretty far away, and we're near their ports as well. But if we head just straight west, we'd be okay. Okay, moderate breeze from the south, so we're gonna have to head north. Let's get our ship, let's get the Thetis to kind of lure them south while the rest of my ships head north. Hopefully they just pursue a little bit. That's my hope. Get these guys to go straight north, squad max. But the Thetis will head a little bit south. She'll head just southeast, which hopefully will suck this ship down. Squad max. And hopefully we can avoid these guys getting seen. Okay, that's good, that's what I wanted. Yes, come down here where the water is nice and warm. They, you know what they say, the further south you are, the warmer the water. As long as you're north of the equator when you say that. We're te technically kind of risking the Thetis to do this because, yeah, she would not stand with, <laughs> she would not survive an engagement with this heavy cruiser. Kind of like the heavy cruiser I think I made in, what, is that the beginning of this one? Yeah, I, I kind of make a design like this now. It's a lot of seven inch guns though. Very silly to do seven inch guns, obviously. One inch lower and you have um, the ability to hit destroyers. This ship is actually really vulnerable to a torpedo run by my destroyers. Really good to know. And it's extremely heavy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I, I really like that idea. Maybe that's the seam we're looking for. Okay, obviously even their 10-inch guns were way out of range right now. Okay, so let's let these guys do their thing. 
As soon as we get onto a plane which is a little bit more north, we have to probably send the Thetis back a little bit because she's, yep, too far. That's what I thought. But this is just giving us enough time to set up our forces where we want them. And it's not like we have any reason for the Thetis. Okay, I don't know why you're... Not that it matters, there's only one, but I just hate seeing the line of breast there because it's just my least favorite formation. Okay, so let's get these guys going exactly like that. Okay, we're not in spotting range yet. Nowhere near the 10, so six inch range. I think the 10 inch range is still pretty far. Now we're probably starting to spot them and they're probably sp starting to spot us. So here we go. Squad max, let's go. Let's try to sink this heavy cruiser before the rest of the ships begin to engage. It's a trap, it's a trap. <laughs> I mean, it could also be a double trap. She could be luring us into a, you know, well, they don't really have that many heavy ships, so I guess it can't be so bad. And again, I'm gonna be pretty happy, pretty content to get my uh, destroyers really close. We know what the heavy cruiser is going to have to do. She's gonna have to disengage from our dreadnoughts. Now we're only firing with what, with one gun right now? Yeah, oh, two, we're getting two. So that's kind of the nice thing with having this, uh, Oh, so she's opening fire on the Thetis? Well, that's fine. Turn the Thetis away. Wow. Oh, that's a nice start to things, isn't it? Actually landing a 13-inch shell. We're... Let's see. What are we? What range are we at here? Let's do a little bit of math. We're at... Oh, no, no. Okay, well, let's see. I think we're penetrating no matter what. <laughs> even at 15,000, we're penetrating 10 inches or even 2 inches of deck. From here, it's possible we're hitting the deck. Yeah, 18,000. We are at 18,000. So, geez. And, but we're, that means we're probably penetrating the deck unless she has over two inches of deck armor. She doesn't. Well, I mean, it's not a guarantee that we're penetrating as much as I thought. And of course, the Weissenberg, just to make things terrible, had one of her turrets jam, one of the ones that should have been firing. I think this is in 20? Yeah, so we'll catch up even with our dreadnoughts. Maybe we don't even have to risk our destroyers. Okay. Oh, yeah, well, we took some damage there. Whoa! Can I see what that was real fast? I, I didn't see. Oh, it was a splinters. Okay, so it, basically she missed with probably one of her bigger guns, but happened to hit us just because of... The gun was so big and blew up and splinters caused damage. I don't know exactly how that works, but... But we know we'll be able to get a full broadside off from this guy pretty soon, and she's not going to survive that for very long. Let's get this guy back in. Okay. So once we sink the heavy cruiser, I'll definitely be content to call this episode to a close. I mean, this battle to a close. We're not worried about her two 10-inch guns. <laughs> and I think we're getting a full broadside off now, probably from both ships. Yeah, Pearson's not firing completely, so we have to angle, I think, a little more up. And now the Pearson can. Yeah, there. Good. Very good. Some more hits. Some more hits with 6-inch guns. Maybe not as effective. 8 inch, I mean the 13 inch. I want to be a little careful about. Oh wow, we've already eliminated. <laughs> we've already destroyed both of our 10 inch turrets. Yeah, that's pretty good. It's just one of those days for the poor Tokiwa, whatever type ship this is. Just one of those days, you know, like, wow. Really bad luck. Oh, oh, 
Okay, so this is the rest of the fleet she was running to. We don't necessarily want to engage the rest of the fleet. What we'll probably do is set our torpedoes to kind of screen our exit here. So we're not going to run at these guys yet. Uh... <sighs> okay, well let's see what we're up against. 10, 12 inch guns. Not particularly great belt armor. Still much better than ours. Really good turret armor. Low, good, I mean, they just have good everything armor. This is a behemoth. We have to get close to hit uh, the belt if we're going to do anything, because the deck is four inches, which is incredible. <laughs> that can probably stand up to 16 inch shells, which we clearly do not have. But we can use the fact that we have destroyers leading the way to our advantage. Yep, she's firing at us. But she won't be able to fire very long because we're going to start engaging her with our torpedo boats. Torpedo boats away. I don't want to get out of here without sinking that ship, though. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Four aft hull hit. It was a successful hit. Penetrated with the star. We hit them again with our 13 inch guns. So. Probably need to lend, we probably need to send our destroyers to finish off the Tokiwa. Okay, well, this is crazy. I don't know what I'm doing here. <laughs> squad Max. Whoa, not Squad Max. Personal Max, which will leave the G8 behind, but that's fine. She shouldn't have reattached. Okay, good. We're getting the... We're getting them to turn. So let's again focus on the Heavy Cruiser here. of secondaries do you have? Seven. Wow, look at all those guns. Good lord. She's getting all ten off uh, on us at the same time. But she has seven six-inch guns, four four-inch guns. It's a sizable compliment. We'll probably lose a destroyer in this run, but hey, if we take down one of their heavy cruisers for it, I guess it's worth it. Just to make a note, so that everyone knows that I'm aware of this, if I was to just disengage right now, we would come out ahead. We probably put their... This one might be like interned or something. But just in the raw victory points, we'd be very far ahead. I just don't seem to be able to do that, though. I mean, a real captain doesn't think like that, right? A real admiral's all about sinking ships. And that's what I find myself in. Not. I like to min-max, but I'd like to play the game in, in the spirit the game is made to be played. So although we do min-max quite a bit especially in terms of budget, which I think makes more sense for a real person, you know, in real life to do. I don't think that min-maxing victory points is as fair, because I don't really think the victory points really make sense all the time. Okay, let's get these guys to start engaging this and get their torpedoes off. So you are still engaging the correct target, good. Medium damage. That is, you're gonna be the torpedo runner then. Okay, here we go. Some more good 13 inch hits. Hmm. An unsighted fires. Oh god. From the south. Oh god. Oh god. That is. Alright, now we're in a real pickle. Our escape plan plow through these guys, head north. So we're no longer worried about uh, this heavy cruiser. Squad Max, let the Thetis launching torpedoes. Oh, at the wrong ship. That's the wrong ship. I mean, I guess I can't tell them which ship to launch at, but they are technically trying to engage the correct ship. We made it this far without getting hit. I'm pretty happy about that. Okay, well, you know, knock on wood, I should have, because that's about to come to an end. Probably a six inch hit. 
Okay, there's a battle cruiser. We need the Thetis to kind of screen for us. <sighs> this is tough to decide because I could try to engage the battle cruiser. It's not going to be as resilient. This thing is just the walking dead. Okay, but keep going squad max. That's the important thing here. Good, we're, we're getting her to, like, when she can't fire all of her guns, she's useless. She's only firing two of her five now. That's very important. We need time to be able to, oh my gosh, find out what we're up against here. Yeah, that's not good. Okay, so I think we'll just start engaging this destroyer. Try to mow her down very quickly. Now you launch torpedoes, of course. And yeah, we'll head back down towards this heavy cruiser to try to take it out very quickly. Okay, Thetis pulled back into line. Near miss is fine. Okay, what are we up against here? Six 12 inch guns, 10 inch belt. Okay. I've seen enough. Our destroyers have done their work here. Squad max away. We're gonna neglect, just completely ignore the Kawachi, make a run down with our destroyers on the heavy cruiser. Meanwhile, our battleships will be begin to engage the Kurama. I don't know why you're launching torpedoes now. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh my god, you idiot. Oh my... Did you guys see the idiocy? <laughs> so the D4 was here. She launched her torpedoes at the heavy cruiser? Neglecting the fact that our... How do I avoid this torpedo? Oof. Now the G8 is launching torpedoes. I pray to God, not at the heavy cruiser. Now that's good. That's that's a solid. That's a solid launch. Okay. Let's get these guys to start engaging the battle cruiser. In fact, we're gonna turn back this way. Should I? I guess no. We want to run at the battle cruiser. How's her deck armor? Two inch, so we could penetrate the deck, but I think ours isn't that great either. Yeah, we only have two inch decks. So let's get closer so that we can try to bring our nine and a half bail to. <laughs> it's really not so great. They technically have higher belt, but we'll have the numbers advantage, so. Okay, you guys run on the inside, please. This is on fire? No, I'm just seeing a lot of red lines. Okay. And this is where... Come on. You got hit by a 7-inch gun? They don't even have anything left. Well, please launch torpedoes. The V2 is just decimated here. I don't want us firing. Didn't I say to begin engaging the battle cruiser? That's why I turned you guys that way for. Okay, well, let's spin around and once again distract the battleship. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of torpedoes. Holy cow. And none of them hit. Are you kidding me? That's incredible. How many torpedoes do we have left now? Yeah, not a lot left. So let's turn off torpedo launching for a second. Felt extended, that's fine. We know what we're doing now. Getting these guys out of here, getting this guy out of here. You can launch torpedoes. You have none left. Fine. Go away. Well, 
we're getting pinched in, aren't we? You guys absolutely, you just have to sink this damn ship, man. Okay, here we go. Let's. We have to get to the Kawachi class. I don't even know why we're limiting flooding on the Weissenberg. Okay, the very little, very little flooding. I didn't want this to be like this. I didn't think this episode would turn out this way. But, okay, fine. She's a heavy damage on fire. We are making her do a lot of maneuvering, and that could be good. Okay, keep that on for a second. Only could be good in the sense that she, if she has to keep moving at a high speed, you know, she could be causing herself to not limit flooding. Okay, not yet. I think now is the time. Your final torpedo barrage. Go ahead and send it away. And we will continue to, whoa. Oh, so we detached in the end. That's fine. Reattached. We got a hit. We are keeping the Kawachi from closing in, so that's good news. Okay. How many torpedoes do you have left? Everyone has two more that they can fire. Those are all destined for the Kawachi. Looks good! Oh man! Major bummer. I thought that was a hit. This damn ship, man. Unsinkable. Okay, new target. Kawachi. One more turn, and then we turn on your ability. Oh, she's turning into us. Oh, that is that is wonderful. No, hold fire. Not until you can see the whites of their eyes. I have been very much neglecting this fight here. She's eventually going to run herself into this wall, so what we'll do is we'll turn towards and then turn away. Okay. All right. I think it's fair enough at this point to start launching your torpedoes. G8's launching torpedoes. That's the last. Why aren't these guys launching torpedoes? We're sacrificing a lot of destroyers, but whatever. I I don't. I get frustrated with destroyers. <laughs> Maybe a little too easily. <laughs> Looks like she's gonna bounce this way, so let's head this way. That vision is actually gonna be helpful for us. Because uh, whatever destroyers live, possibly none, should be able to make this, uh, okay. Doesn't look like we're doing it. What are we doing? Well, whatever, AI control. Let them do their thing. So our vision range is such that we can't find this battle cruiser suddenly. It has one light crew, light, oh, okay, well, that's fine. We will run into it soon. There they are. Okay, well, let's keep going then. They'll come back on their own, eventually. Maybe. Maybe they're just gonna launch more torpedoes? Oop, got a hit. They got a hit. That's not good. Alright, fire started. That's all fine. It's all well and good. It's fine. We don't really care. Torpedoes are such a fickle beast. Slow down one more. It is important now that, yes, you take care of the escort and we take care of the battle cruiser. We're going in. Two more hits. Now, the advantage we should have is um, caliper. I'm a hit. She does have torpedo tubes, but we're gonna. Good! Gracious! We did it! <laughs> okay! All speed out of here. Mission accomplished. Let's go home. 
We don't know who's going to survive from this other group. Well, not many. Hmm? Do you have any torpedoes? No. Do you have any torpedoes? Hey, you know what would be really cool is if, like, while you were dying, you just... Oh, you did launch a torpedo. Hey, that was pretty good. Their Tokuyo is going to get away, but... You know what? We earned the victory on the Tokiwa. Instead, we didn't earn the victory over the Battlecruiser. Probably would have taken it eventually, but... Um, we'll have to settle for just a little bit of luck. We got so unlucky before that we'll take a little bit of luck now. Okay, great. So let's uh, just steam our way out of here. Everyone can just go to AI control. I'm fine with that. Riding west. Well, that was a lot of fun. And a longer episode, but another fleet engagement that we successfully won. So good, good news for us. Let's slow down the cruise. What are we leaving behind in our wake? Well, the important thing is we're leaving one of their battle cruisers, their newest battle cruiser that they literally just took off dry dock maybe a month or two ago. Okay, let's uh Well, let's just go down to like nothing so that they don't have to try to keep up and we'll spin. Well, let's spin back towards them first at cruise. Now let's just go down to like zero. So if we are suddenly, uh, somebody does suddenly come at us, we will be in a very terrible position, <laughs> just floating in the water, having a nice time of it. Okay, I guess the B2 just decided she's gonna do her own thing, but whatever. All right, so here's the final result. Their heavy cruiser got away, but we sank their battle cruiser, which is, I'm sure, a lot more points. Yep, this guy is only 25,000 points, and we got the 87,000 ton. Now, to be honest, this is why you don't have nine inch turrets, because apparently we hit this turret and it blew up. Nine inch turrets, that's very silly. I myself only have, I think mine are only 10 inch, right? 10 and a half, so yeah, I'm, just kind of straddling a line myself, but well. Well, that's going to conclude this episode, and I think probably even wow, two victory, two prestige points. We're up to forty-seven in nineteen fifteen. It's a good start, and our victory points are really starting to get carried away here. I probably will end this episode here, and I also will probably end the war. So what's going to happen is off camera, I'm just going to go ahead and simulate the rest of the events. Um, I'm not going to, if I, there's any engagements I have to do, like I need to auto-resolve, I probably won't auto-resolve. I'll just um, do them off camera though, because I probably won't get involved in another fleet engagement. There's no point, too much risk. So, so thanks for watching this episode and stay tuned for the next one where we should, should be doing some more ship design because it should be back to peacetime. All right, well, take care.